Here we have a young chap that has what we call error fever. The poor Neanderthal can't stop looking for errors. Like this cat, for instance, leave it alone, you buffoon. Sure, this tree is a little dead, but most wouldn't consider that an error. He better start talking about error Pokemon cards soon, or he'll explode. Oh look, he's about to start now. What's going on you guys? My name is Matt and I cannot believe we are already on week 24 of me uh, watching over the eBay sales for error Pokemon cards and ranking them and pinning them against each other to see who has the highest error value increase. I have nothing else to say, let's get right into this week's episode. Kicking things off, we have a base set booster pack with Blastoise on it. That's a lot of bees and this has the triangle error. Now I have seen these triangle errors before and I never really knew where they came from. And uh, just like most things on the internet, I found the answer on Reddit from a user. And uh, essentially what happened was, I believe they printed these packs uh, and they put the first edition stamp, which would go right above where uh, cards is on the pack in the bottom right there. And they were not supposed to be first edition packs and so they put this black triangle to cover it up. And supposedly uh, there was around two to three hours worth of printing that happened for this. So uh, so I don't know how many exactly packs that means, uh, two to three hours worth. I can imagine they were just pumping them out. So there's probably a decent amount, but they're always pretty rare to see. Little advice, we have a couple of uh, error packs this week. Uh, if you have one, don't open it. I don't think there's any value to opening them uh, unless you're just rolling in the dough, then go ahead. But yeah, I think the value is with these packs being sealed. Um, this is a long way to say that uh, this card was listed for $522 but had a best accepted offer price of $470. Um, if you look at the numbers right below me here, uh, you can see average non-error price for a base set pack um, goes for around $375. And then I looked up the error price for this, so the triangle error uh, price for this, and it's $355. So, uh, Numbers are a bit skewed, sometimes it can be hard with these packs, and I think the prices can range a decent amount. So uh, I think the biggest thing we need to take away is this sold for $470. Next up we have a base set Ninetales with the Black Flame error. So for this error, it's essentially the flame that is kind of engulfing Ninetales there. Uh, this is uh, black when it's supposed to be blue. Uh, every Shadowless Ninetales has the black uh, flame, and some people will incorrectly call that the Black Flame error. It is not. It's for the uh, regular base set uh, with the, the shadow here on the right of the card. And uh, um, this one sold for not a lot of money. I, I think usually these should go for more money. I, I think, uh, yeah, average error price is $40.16 here. Um, I think a reason for that is because uh, this was an auction, and so usually you don't fetch as high of a price for an auction, but you get paid quicker, obviously, because uh, you're guaranteed to have a sale if you have one bid. Yeah, so I'd say the buyer got a good deal on this one. Okay, so speaking of good deals, holy crap, we have a Shadowless Vulpix here with the... It's called the Blue Butt Error. Uh, this is called the Blue Spot Error here from uh, CGC, and I actually saw someone call it the, the Tramp Stamp Error. Uh, so call it whatever you want, there is a blue marking on the rear end of Vulpix here, and this is actually a repeating error. And uh, this card um, sold for way less than it should have. Uh, it was listed for $29.99, which is way too low, and uh, it was accepted for that price. Uh, that is crazy low. I would say that this card should be in the at least $100 range. I believe I looked up a couple different sales of uh, eights and nines that were uh, in the triple digits. So congrats to the buyer. And if you're the seller and you're watching this, uh, looks like you've sold quite a bit of Pokemon cards. Uh, why don't you subscribe and I can uh, I can help you list the prices out for this. Uh, yeah. Next up, we have a fossil. Next up, we have a Haunter from Fossil Set. This is a Hollow, and this is the Blue Stain Error. Uh, I've been talking about this the last few weeks, but if you're unfamiliar with what this error is, uh, there is a blue stain to the right of Haunter there, and these kind of uh, vary in their severity. Uh, this one is on the more severe side because there are quite a few blue streaks coming through, and it actually goes through outside of the Hollow Box, and some of the less severe uh, ones will have uh, 
just a couple of dots here and there. Um, this card sold for $200, which I would say is pretty high, but that is due to two conditions here. Uh, because it is more of a severe error with those blue streaks being more pronounced. And also, the card is in pretty good shape. Uh, I think you usually get a pretty good idea of the card's condition by looking at the back. So if you look above me here, we have the back of the card. And uh, yes, this card sold for $200 this week. And uh, with an EVI, or an error value increase of 1900%, that is number 9 this week on their list of EVIs. So the last few episodes, uh, what I've been doing is I create all the graphics for this uh, and then I basically throw them into Premiere and they are mixed up so I do not know what is coming next. I think that's kind of fun to be able to uh, um, speak freely about this and kind of give my honest reaction. I, I don't know which card is coming next. And uh, this next card here is a Charizard EX with a crimp error. Uh, CGC gave it a grade 8 and they called it a partial crimp. I think I would agree with that. Um, it looks like almost a full crimp here on the front, but if you look on the back of the card, it's actually not going all the way through. Uh, this occurs when they are closing up the pack. Um, it gets misaligned in the crimping machine, and the crimping machine actually leaves an impression on the card. And um, these range in severity. This one is, uh, I'd say, about an average crimp, uh, maybe a little bit less than average, but boy, did it add some value to it. Um, Average non-error price for a grade 8 for this uh, Charizard EX is around $88. Uh, this one sold for $1,200 in auction. I uh, had three bidders and uh, that gives the EVI 1,256% and that is good enough for number 10 this week on their list of EVI. Next up we have a Dark Dragonite from Team Rocket set with the No Hollow error. And this one is a repeating error. Uh, it says 582 on the bottom, where it should say 2282. Uh, 582 was reserved for the hollow. And uh, this one sold for a lot of money. I know I keep saying that, but they do. Uh, this is a raw card that is a non hollow. It sold for $550. This was actually um, one bid on this. So one person bid on this. And. Uh, spent $550 on it. And one thing that I think is interesting, if you look above me, this is actually the pricing for first edition Dark Dragonite non hollow error. Uh, you can see the jump between grade eight and grade nine. So I, I believe when the buyer was purchasing this card, they really think they can get a grade nine here because that is where the price significantly jumps up. And that's where you can kind of make a good ROI on your investment. So I don't know exactly what the numbers would be for the standard version instead of the first edition, but I have to imagine that there's probably that similar jump there. And uh, yeah, this is a clean card. Again, I, I'm not an expert in grading whatsoever, but I can tell a clean card when I see it. Uh, and this one looks pretty good. It looks like there's a little bit of a, a mark uh, under a giant tail in the middle of the card, but I think that's just a hair. I think in another photo that's actually missing then. So yeah, uh, maybe we'll see this card pop up later if the person's just trying to make a flip. They'll purchase it, get it graded, and sell it again. So maybe we'll see it in a couple weeks here. But $550 for a raw Pokemon card. Uh, typically goes for around $10 non-error version. And that gives the EVI 5,732%. And that is good enough for number three this week on their list of EVI. I just noticed an error. Uh, I put a Japanese card as the non-error card and the regular error card is English. My bad, but uh, I guess we love errors here. So maybe you're happy about that. Uh, so here next up we have a uh, Dusclops from Shrouded Fable and uh, this is a crimp error. Uh, this one is definitely on the lighter side, I would say. Um, and uh, I think you, you usually see crimp errors more in the modern versions of Pokemon cards. Um, I can't say that for sure, but you definitely see them more often, I would say. It's uh, definitely rare to see them in the vintage cards. And uh, I'm kind of surprised this one added a good amount of value. Uh, I saw on a Facebook group I'm in for error Pokemon cards, someone asked if the severity of a crimp kind of increases the value or not. And I responded saying, yes, I think so. I think uh, if this was a more pronounced crimp, it could sell for a little bit more. Maybe I'm I'm completely off here. I don't know. But either way, 649% uh, for the EVI for a pretty light crimp is good, I would say. So $40, uh, congrats to the buyer and congrats to the seller on this one. 
All right, I'm just realizing now um, I have the top five for the most expensive cards here. And um, number two was the Crimp Charizard. I missed that one uh, for $1,200. That was number two most expensive. And the Dark Dragonite Raw was number four most expensive. And the Triangle Air Pack was number five most expensive. My bad, I'm not going back to edit this in. Uh, you're just getting this information now. So next up we have a wonky miscut energy switch. So wonky miscut is when um, the card is actually twisted a little bit uh, when it's miscut. And you can see here, uh, definitely less of a new card showing on the top left and more of a different card showing on the bottom left. Uh, and you can see by the alignment dots uh, how they're kind of uh, um, not completely lined up. Uh, definitely indicates too that this is wonky. And for a modern miscut, this one is definitely more severe. We've seen some that have been absolutely crazy, but it's not the craziest we've seen, but this is a pretty good price, I'd say, for a modern Pokemon card. Um, $42 that this one sold for. It was an auction and it had nine bidders. And that is good enough for number six this week on our list of EVI, 3,081%. Next up, we have an uh, Evolution Box Error War Turtle. This got graded a PSA 8, and if I'm not mistaken, the seller of this Pokemon card actually watches these episodes. They alerted me last week that they sold it and they were hoping it'd be on this episode, and here it is, so congrats to you. Uh, yeah, this is a very high grade for this card. You don't see many higher than this. Obviously, it's a grade 8. Yeah, this is such an awesome card. I. Uh, want one at some point uh have not purchased it i think it, what i want is i kind of want to find one out in the wild i know that's gonna be very difficult uh, and it might take a really long time but i think if i am going to get one i'm going to get it my way and i think that's how i want to do it so you can see this one typically goes for around 19 dollars uh for a grade eight and uh for a non-error card, and this one sold for $215. Now, if I can give a little bit of advice here, uh, when I was looking at the error prices for this, uh, let me actually pull that up here. So with a lot of these repeating errors, you can actually find the price of these repeating errors on price charting. That is what I use to find all these prices. So when you see non-error uh, price per grade below me here, that is from price charting. Uh, they do a good job of kind of uh, keeping a finger on the pulse of the market for what prices are going for. And I'm seeing here that a grade seven goes for around $230. And uh, there's actually not a grade eight price uh, for this. So this might be one of the first uh, grade eights sold. And uh, it'd be kind of cool to see if this price actually uh, is reflected in price charting. So my advice would be to maybe uh, have sold it for a little bit more. Maybe you did. Uh, and, uh, or maybe you had it listed for a higher price before, but it wasn't selling. So you lowered it down a little bit. Either way, we're talking, you know, a difference of like, um, $20, $30, so not a big deal. Um, again, congrats to the seller on this. Uh, I hope you're watching this. And yeah, let's get on to the next card. Boy, uh, this, is, this is the big dog. So PSA 8 is pretty incredible. It is, and I'm so glad that viewer was watching. Um, but PSA 10, this is the first example I have seen of this. Uh, I'm looking right now on the uh, price charting for the Evolution Box War Turtle Error. And um, it is not here because I, I don't think we've seen a PSA 10 or a 10 from any of the grading companies before. This card sold for $3,050. Wow, that is actually the number one highest sale this week uh, for our uh, highest sale prices. And um, the EVI is 3,713%. Uh, and that is good enough for number five this week on their list of EVI. 87 bidders. You can tell people wanted this bad because uh, this might be a, um, what says pop 18. Oh, well, I guess they don't sell very often, but um, yeah, th this is definitely a very rare card though. Next up, we have a CGC 9 Haunter with that stain error. And you can see this one that might be even just a little bit more severe than that last one. Uh, you see a little bit more of the blue on the right side of that uh, art box there. Yeah. And, uh, this one was listed for $999.99 and had a best accepted offer price of $622. That seems high. That's, uh, I would say, very high, actually. Uh, I don't know much more to say about this. Uh, I don't know if there's any examples of this in a PSA or CGC 10. Yeah, EVI is 1145%, so I think just missed the top 10. But obviously an awesome card. We always love to see these error cards get rated 
very high because hopefully they're going to stay like that the rest of their lives. Next up we have a Ho-Oh from Neo Revelation and this is a double hollow variant. Um, one uh, critique I have of the seller here, uh, Chill Dude 2012 looks like you've sold a lot of Pokemon cards. Uh, I doubt you're watching this. Actually, I, I think I have a marketing plan where any of the cards that show up in the auction uh, list here in my video, I'm going to reach out to those sellers on eBay and let them know, hey, you know, um, these cards or this card that you sold is in my video. Why don't you check it out? And maybe that might be a good way to kind of grow the channel a little bit. I know people love seeing me talk about uh, the cards that were sold, whether they bought it or sold it. It's kind of a, a fun experience, I would say. But uh, my one uh, critique is this is not a hollow bleed. This is just a double hollow error or variant. Um, looks like we got a swirl. Uh, I don't talk about swirls too often, but it looks like right by the beak of Ho-Oh. Uh, for the double hollow variant, you can tell it because uh, obviously there is more hollow here to see, but also the tail feathers and just the feathers in general kind of all get covered up uh, by the hollow. And this one sold for a good amount of money. It looks like the card's in great shape. Uh, this one sold for $200. I would say EVI between 100 and 200% is usually on par for these double hollow variants. Maybe a little bit more for first editions because those are a little bit rarer. But yeah, I'd say this is on par and $200 for a Pokemon card is pretty crazy. Next up, we have a Pokemon Evolutions Charizard with the Hollow Bleed, and also I would say this is off center as well. I'm curious if uh, they were to get this graded with CGC, if this were to get a double um, error. I, I know a CGC is pretty good about recognizing Hollow Bleeds. Uh, I don't know in about I don't know about modern Pokemon cards, but I've seen some examples of actually. There's one example here later where they recognize the error. Um, and I would say this is off-center enough, especially some of the other cards I've seen. Uh, if you look above me, when I was searching for the uh, image for the non-error card, um, looks like Pokemon Charizard XY Evolutions has uh, three and a half stars on Google. I'm not sure how people are able to rate that. I uh, thought that was pretty funny. Poor Charizard. I think it's a cool card. I don't think it's worth three and a half. I'd give it four and a half. Um, either way, this sold for $200 and it had one bidder this week and a pretty good EVI of 441%. Next up, we have a CGC9 Venonat from Jungle Set. This is a first edition, and this is the line error. So this line error occurs, um, it's on the left side of the card, the upper left side, and uh, it looks like this was caused by a hair obstruction. So can you imagine being the person who uh, accident accidentally had a hair fall out? and then that got printed on thousands of Pokemon cards. Uh, I think that'd be pretty awesome. Kind of immortalize yourself a little bit. Uh, so obviously this is a repeating error. I could not find an average error price, but this one sold for $67.50 this week uh, for a CGC 9. Next up, we have a couple of grade nine mirror hollows. I will uh, get to the other one in a second, but this one we have a first edition PSA 9 Kabutops from Fossil Set, and as I said, this is the Mirror Hollow error, uh, also known as a No Star Hollow. Um, and this is where basically there's none of the the star foil in it. So if you look, it's basically just a a clean mirror there. Uh, so it's still shiny, but it doesn't have uh, all the I would say the interesting bits to it. And uh, this is a repeating error, I believe. Uh, yeah, this can be found in just about all the sets that Wizards of the Coast uh, had printed. Uh, this one got sold for a pretty steep discount, I would say. This was listed for $1,150 Canadian, uh, but best accepted offer price was $250 Canadian. Um, so that translates to $182.56. Uh, EVI is not too high, but I think for, for this era, that's about on par, 62%. Here is another uh, Mirror Hollow, a uh, first edition fossil set. And I double checked here, and this is not the same seller. I thought if there's two grade nines, first edition fossil Mirror Hollows, it might be the same seller, but it is not. This one is CGC nine and is almost a complete nine. Um, that would be if the edges got a 9 as well, or that would be a strong 9. I, I don't know exactly what they call it. 
But um, yeah, this one was also listed for $1,000 or a very high price and had the best accepted offer price of a lot lower. That's why I thought this might have been the same seller as well. Yeah, so this one sold for $200 this week. Next up, we have a Garchomp V from Astral Radiance, and this is a severe miscut. Uh, I've talked about this before, but my personal grading system for miscuts, you have a regular Pokemon card, you have off-center where it's like slightly shifted one way or another, you have a miscut where you actually see an alignment dot on the Pokemon card, and then you have a severe miscut, and that is where you can see a good portion of another card on this card. You can see the top of this uh, Garchomp, what would that be, one-fifth of the card is a different card. Um, this looks so awesome. It has uh, that contrast that I like where both cards don't have the same border, and so it's just like a night and day difference between the two. And it's also very satisfying that it looks like um, centering left to right is pretty perfect, I would say. Maybe skewed a little bit to the right, but uh, to have uh, it be completely shifted uh, vertically and then uh, um, left to right is pretty standard, I think that is a very neat look. This got graded a uh, PSA 9 miscut, so I believe that is just the same as a PSA 10, but uh, this is... Uh, PSA is kind of version of recognizing that it is a miscut. And this one sold for $370.10 and uh, had an EVI of 1057%. Uh, not in the top 10, but obviously a, a very incredible card and an awesome sale to talk about this week. All right, next up we have a Misdrevious Hollow from Neo Revelation, and this is a double hollow variant. Uh, this is always an interesting one to tell because uh, obviously around Mistrevis, uh there is more hollow. It's a little bit darker, but the eyes get filled in, and I freaking love that. For some reason, this reminds me of the Pokemon movie uh, Mewtwo Strikes Back when Mewtwo has the clones, and they are revealed, and they look almost the same as the other Pokemon, but they have uh, some subtle differences. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting between the two Mistrevises here. Um, obviously the double hollow mischievous I think would be the Pokemon clone yeah I think I played a clip while I was talking about that so you can enjoy that and um, this is uh, yeah I'd say right on par for what I said for EVI I think between 1 and 200 uh, percent is about right this was listed for $64.95 and sold for that amount and had an EVI of 125 percent Next up, we have my boy Inferno Games here, and uh, this is a uh, miscut, uh, but it is not cut by the factory. This is a not factory cut card. Uh, this one's in a little bit rougher shape, and I think that that was definitely taken into consideration when selling this card. Um, this is a cool one. I usually am kind of selective for which not factory cut card I choose to talk about. I usually talk about one per episode. Uh, a couple reasons why I chose this one. Uh, Look at the fighting symbol here. The part on the right that is missing is completely filled in by the part on the left of the card. So it's like, again, in that um, that game Portal, where you stick your hand through the portal and then it comes out on the other side, and the more you stick it out, the more it comes in and everything. That is like what this is right here. I think that's very, very unique, very awesome. And um, this also uh, is the edge of a sheet uh, for the miscut. So you can see... Uh, there is a white border on the top here, and on the back, there is actually the uh, uh, different colors there that I think is for the calibration for the printing. And so uh, those are kind of the two reasons why I included this card. Um, and again, like I have said before, uh, these always do well on thumbnails too. So you might be seeing that in the thumbnail when you clicked here. And um, yeah, no card to compare it to. I'm not going to compare it to a regular energy card. I don't include these in the top 10. So let's just take this for what it's worth. Uh, it's a very cool card, and this one sold for $24.95. Next up, we have a big kahuna here. We have a uh, Pikachu from Burning Shadows, and I believe this is a missing print layer. Now, there was a couple examples last week where this showed up. There was one card that had a missing print layer, and one had a low ink error. And uh, I believe a missing print layer uh, will uh, have... It will be consistent throughout the whole card. So you can see... Uh, the card on the right is a lot lighter, but it's consistent. Um, if it was a low ink error, you might only see half of the card uh, missing uh, some of its ink uh, versus the rest of the half. So uh, 
Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you error experts out here. Uh, I am no expert. I just talk about this, and I've been doing this for 24 weeks. Uh, so I always like to learn, but I think I'm right here. Um, and boy, 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 did this sell for a lot of money. $222.22. Uh, average non-error price is $1.40. And that gives the EVI 15,773%, which is good enough for number two this week on their list of EVI. Next up, we have a pincer from Jungle Set with the no symbol error. And uh, so if you're unfamiliar with this error, basically the jungle symbol is actually missing in the bottom right of the art box there. This is a pretty well-known repeating error, and it occurred with every card in the... Um, yeah, this occurred in every card in Jungle Set, I believe. Uh, not every card, but every card has this error, or one of, one of the errors. Um, this one was listed for $420.69. Nice, I like it. Uh, but had a best accepted offer price of $375. Um, couple things to note here. CGC 10, that's impressive. Uh, this typically goes for non-error price is $153.50. But it's interesting to see uh, they have uh, price charting has the different uh, uh, prices for the different grading companies for a 10. So SGC 10 goes for $297. I don't agree with that. I don't know how um, that sold for more than a, a CGC 10. PSA 10 is $484. And BGS 10, which I would say is usually the king, is uh, $742. So... I'd imagine if this got graded with a different grading company, it could fetch for more, but uh, some of them might be a little bit stricter too, so you might not get a 10. So uh, uh, I'm glad I don't have to make that decision. We'll leave that up to the buyer. We might never know what they do. Also, uh, average error price for this, uh, because um, there's enough documented of this, a CGC 10 goes for $240.19. I think for upcoming videos, I'm gonna, if they have the average error price, I'm gonna show it just like I'm doing with the non-error uh, price there where it shows all the grades. I think I'm gonna do that for the next one because uh, that's interesting to see that data as well. This is an interesting one. I don't think we've seen this one show up before. I was aware of this error, but I have not seen it. So this is a Mewtwo from um, the Warner Brothers uh, Pokemon movie. Actually, that one that I referenced before with the clones. Uh, it's a great movie. I actually saw it in person and got some of these cards. But unfortunately, mine were not error cards. Um, so this one is a light stamp error. You can see the card on the right, uh, the stamp where it says uh, uh, Warner Brothers presents uh, you know, Pokemon the first movie. That's very light. It looks like, um, if you look above me, I think it's a little bit bigger and a little bit clearer. Um, Right side of the stamp is showing it slightly, but really not much gold there, and the rest of the stamp is basically missing. So something must have happened. It got, uh, you know, the stamping machine was low on ink, or it just didn't press down hard enough to make that impression. But uh, yeah, typically when you see a Mewtwo of uh, like this card sell, uh, it is because of the inverted stamp error. But this is not, and uh, this one sold for less than that, but this one might be a little bit rarer even. I don't know. I don't know how many examples of this there are. Um, this one sold for $203.50, and uh, error value increase is 2,231%. That's good enough for number seven this week. And as I'm thinking about this, uh, I'm not sure if this is rare, so there's 30 cards of each inverted stamp for this. And there might be more examples than 30 for the light stamp. So who is to say? But uh, awesome card. And uh, let's get on to the next one. Next up, we have what I believe is a Japanese Raichu uh, with a crimp error. But this crimp error does not look like the other ones we have seen in this episode. This is actually a long crimp. Uh, and uh, funny enough, that was my nickname in high school, long crimp. It wasn't, but I thought that was kind of funny. So I believe what happened here, I actually have a uh, empty pack of uh, base set cards, and uh, I believe it's this part right here that uh, you see uh, there's the, the crimp kind of right there. That's how that part of the pack is sealed. So somehow that part of the crimping machine got pressed onto the card, and uh, you can tell that this is definitely a kind of a rare occurrence, uh, especially it looks like it crimped all the way through. Uh, you can see the back of the card above me here. Um, it's very interesting, but you can tell it's rare because of the price, I would say. 
Uh, this had eight bids in auction and sold for $50.01 this week. Non error price for this card is $1.12 usually, so nothing too special. Uh, that gives the EVI 4,365%. And that's good enough for number four this week. Long Crimp Matt, that was my nickname. Next up, we have a Lost Origin Booster Pack, and this is the red tape error. So essentially, when they are um, closing up the packs, they have a, a huge sheet of uh, plastic that they use, and uh, on the end of that sheet is a red tape. Uh, and that is to basically signify to the workers that, hey, this is the end. The red's supposed to catch their attention, and uh, they should know to uh, switch out a new sheet. And also, um, this would be easy to spot then once the cards are in the pack, um, you can spot the red. And I imagine that uh, a lot of these get pulled, but sometimes they get out into the wild and then you see it get sold on eBay for $145.74. Uh, so I think that's what happened. Uh, very interesting error. Again, like I said with the other pack before, uh, if you own one of these, do not open it. That would absolutely tank the value. You might still be able to sell it for a decent amount, but a lot of the value is held with this being unopened. Um, so uh, EVI of 567%, that's pretty darn solid for an unopened pack of Pokemon cards, I, I would say. All right, this one surprised me a little bit. Uh, this here, we have a uh, wonky miscut Slowbro from Pokemon Go set. And this one sold for $35. I, I, I don't really think that a lot of the cards from Pokemon Go really went for that much. And um, again, this is a pretty pretty significant miscut, but it's not the craziest. Um, I, I think it, around the $20 value would usually be better, but the seller was uh, smart and they were patient. They listed this for $49.99 and uh, Someone thought they got a good deal, and they probably did. Uh, you know, who am I to say? They got this for 35, so uh, hopefully all parties are happy. I see that left dot, or that dot on the left side of the card there. It looks like an alignment dot. Obviously, that's not. Alignment dots are in the bottom left corner there, as you can see. Uh, I don't know if that's just like damage or something to the card. You know, just like a piece of dirt or something. Don't know what that is. Um, overall, though, the card looks like it's in pretty good shape, but. Yeah, it sold for higher than I thought it would, but the, the EVI was 1900%, and that's good enough for number 8 this week on our list of error value increases. Next up, we have a Swampert, uh, and this is an ink error. Now, I don't know exactly what this is, uh, what this would be called, if there's a specific example, or if it, this is maybe an obstruction error because uh, it is uh, missing a portion of the ink. Uh, if you don't know where it is, uh, it's under the name Swampert. You can see the bottom portion is actually cut off a little bit. And this is purchased by someone that I know. So congrats on this purchase, buddy. Uh, that's pretty cool. Got a good price for it, I would say. This is a pretty unique error. And uh, this one sold for $14.57. And speaking of errors from people that I know, let's go to this new segment that I created. Last episode, I talked to my viewers and I said, hey, show me the cool error cards that you have found out in the wild for a great price. Uh, usually this is when uh, people do not know that it's an error and so you come by with your superior knowledge and you pick up this card for an insane price or just a great price, whatever it is. Uh, I think it's always fun to kind of uh, see these cards, see the prices and uh, just to think about how that person felt when they found this deal because I feel like that's a rush that you don't get from many things. Uh, it's, it's pretty fun feeling. So let's start talking about them. First up, we have this Dark Arbok, um, and um, this person purchased this card for $31. And you can see this is actually a hollow shift. And I believe this is a repeating error hollow shift. We've seen some like this before, and um, it's my understanding that the person who sold this card was not aware this is a hollow shift because $31 for this card is a pretty darn good deal. Yeah, a grade 7 uh, non-error price goes for $22, grade 8 goes for $30, so $31 for an error hollow shift uh, Dark Arbok from Team Rocket set, that's pretty good. Next up, we have a user who on eBay, their name is uh, Jif Peanut Butter, and uh, supposedly that some of their sales have showed up in some of the other episodes I have done before. Uh, and they sent me a couple cards that they picked up this week. Uh, so the first one is uh, this Dark Charizard. So they purchased a lot of three Dark Charizards uh, 
for, I believe, $20. It might have been a little bit cheaper. I didn't check if it was the best accepted offer price. Uh, but first thing with this, um, I looked up the average price for a Dark Charizard Don Hollow. It's $22.77. So to pick up three of these, I know the condition might not be perfect, but to pick up three for $20, uh, that's pretty incredible. But um, what we're talking about here is the card on the right. So you can see uh, this card here uh, actually has uh, an ink smear. And I did a little bit of research, and Dark Charizard has what is called the black tape uh, obstruction error. Which essentially there is, a, I believe, 10 unique copies that were found of this where uh, the ink smear basically got smudged through uh, the art in the Pokemon card and onto a different part of the card. So yeah, basically this is somewhat of a repeating error. Uh, it's known out there that this Dark Charizard has this error. And to pick one up for $20, so let's say... What, seven dollars uh if you you know count one of the three here that's pretty incredible next up we have a rocket scyther um and this has an additional white ink error uh clearly you can see here this was not listed as an error so they just used their knowledge to pick this up um and that is on the i believe the left side of the hollow there is where you can see this additional white ink and it looks like maybe a little bit of a hollow shift as well on the top i believe that is the case uh or that might just be some more additional white ink, but uh, yeah, either way, very awesome card and uh, great deal, I would say. Okay, this one's crazy. Uh, so the seller has 1869 reviews. Uh, I I'm curious if they sell Pokemon cards mainly or a different card, but first off, to pick up a Shadowless Squirtle uh, PSA 9 for $39, it's already an incredible deal. It really is. And my records indicate basically uh, a regular Shadowless Squirtle PSA 9 goes for $48.71. So that's already a great deal. But this also is the Red Diamond error where you can see here on Prevent that is actually um, a repeating uh, red dot or diamond that is there. And uh, yeah, I don't know how much this would go for um, if you resold it, but I imagine a lot more money because I've seen some uh, I've seen some raw Squirtles, uh, shallow Squirtles with the Red Diamond Air go for more than thirty nine dollars. So, uh, what an absolute incredible pickup here! So, if you would like to be featured in an upcoming video, please uh, uh, send me uh, your error cards that you picked up. Uh, again, it doesn't have to be on eBay; it can be just out in a Pokemon shop or something. Uh, as long as you got a good deal on it and it's an error card and hopefully uh, you know the person who's selling it did not know it was an error. That's usually how you find these deals, but maybe they list it as an error, but they listed it for crazy cheap. Whatever it is, I want to see the good deals in these cool errors. So check the description to see how you can send me your cards and I can feature them in an upcoming video. All right, back to you, Matt. And we're back. We have uh, a... Uh, Blue dot error, Vulpix, uh, you know, the blue butt, the tramp stamp, whatever you want to call it. This one is a PSA 8. Uh, and remember I said that last person who purchased this, um, the CGC 9 for like $29 got a good deal. A PSA 8 went for $105. So uh, I'd say this is about on point for the, um, for the pricing for this. Uh, yeah, not much more to say about it. It's a cool card. Again, love to see these graded high and, uh, Love this repeating error. Next up, we have a Wiglet uh, 2024 Pokemon card from Temporal Forces, and this got graded a PSA 9 miscut, or again, a PSA 10, however you want to call it. A um, couple things, I don't know what the heck that little symbol is on the uh, upper left portion of the card there, or I'll put an arrow there to show what I'm talking about. Uh, I don't know what that is. Kind of interesting. Um, you can see, uh, I believe, the starting of an alignment dot in the bottom left corner here. And, uh, yeah, I, I guess uh, not much more to say about this than uh, it sold for $65 this week. and had a pretty solid EVI of 583%. Next up, we got a couple of energy cards here. Uh, these are from 2023. It does not say what it is. And I'm unfamiliar with modern cards, so I don't know what it's from either. But these are two wonky uh, miscuts, which I think are pretty cool. I wonder if the rest of the cards in this set um, that they got in their pack were wonky miscuts as well, or if they were just the energies. Uh, either way, it's cool that these two cards uh, were together uh, when they got miscut. Now they're together with the new buyer here. And you can see EVI is very solid, 1150% uh, uh, because both of these cards sold for $25 combined. 
but 1150% uh, is not good enough for the top 10 this week. Next up, we got someone who had a great deal. So this is uh, uh, called the Green Spear Kangaskhan. Uh, basically, there's like a highlighter, um, like a little highlight that goes through Kangaskhan's, uh, what would be their left paw or claw, whatever you want to call it. Call it. And this is actually a repeating error. And you can see in the description here, it actually says, uh, there is also a subtle red streak right above the missing cyan ink. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So th there's also, it's on the head of Kangaskhan. I'll put arrows to point both of this out. But um, yeah, this is a repeating error. And I guess I don't really know the price of what these usually go for. But I want to say at least 10 to $15 is around right for this. And so to get it for uh, 99 cents, that's pretty incredible. Um, price charting has non-error price at $2.76. And so... Uh, uh, EVI is 64%, uh, so, sorry, negative 64%. So, uh, yeah, congrats to the buyer on this one. You, you found a heck of a deal here, and, uh, yeah, I, I bet they were jazzed to get that for this price. All right, and this week's number one highest air value increase card was a Haunter from Pokemon 151, and this is an ink error. Now, we've been seeing these 151 ink errors go for a lot of money, like between $150 and $200 pretty consistently. There's a, you know, some that will have a, a low ink, some that will have, a, yeah, it's usually, I think, just a low ink. It'll, it'll look lighter than the other card. This one confused me a little bit. So the photo above me is what the seller posted. Uh, this is actually the first image in the listing. And then the, the second image they posted is what I put as the error card. Now, if you're looking at the two cards there on the above me, I would think the lighter card is actually the card that has the error. Um, I don't know if that's the case, and the photo that they took for the error card is just crappy. Um, you know, looks like they only have 15 sales, so uh, maybe they're not as experienced at taking the photos of these cards just yet. But for an inexperienced seller, uh, boy, did they make a lot of money off this. This card typically goes for 99 cents. This one went for $185. Uh, that makes the EVI 18,587%, and obviously number one this week on their list of EVI. Well, that's it for this week's episode. I really, really appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, I've been getting a windfall of support. It's been so nice to see. So yes, thank you so much for watching. Uh, give the video a like if you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next week. Goodbye.